This is the second episode of Crypto Stories, a series where we explore the ways crypto has changed people's lives. Check out our first one. Today, we're bringing you three tales in one video. Hit the like button and share this with your friends. Make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to keep up with our interviews, reports, and documentaries on all things crypto. Now, let's meet Timofey from Russia, Brain from Nigeria, and Jack from Singapore. Here are their stories. First of all, I would like to say that I'm a complete amateur in cryptocurrencies. For a long time I was not connected with such area in any way, but I have heard a lot about it from my classmates, from my friends. I studied a lot of humanities, botany, ancient philosophy, film drama, film directing. In 2019, I invested my grandmother's gift in cryptocurrency and it was only $100 from her pension. This is a gift for my birthday. I bought USDT, then I bought Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, only with the help of my friends, because this area is very hard for me. I didn't understand it at all. I wasn't going to trade uh, because it's difficult. I invest this money in a money box, I think. Of course, I didn't tell my grandmother how I spent her gift, I need you to understand that she doesn't know anything at all about uh, internet, about cryptocurrencies of course, and also about uh, directing. She only thinks that one day I will be on TV like an actor or singer. Uh, anyway, I love her so much. Then I forgot about my invest, I stage a play, I listen a lot of lectures. When it came time to shoot a training film, I took out part of her gift, which has already grown a little by that time, and I invested it to my first film. Uh, where actually my grandmother was a main producer. Then we make a movie. The money was only for food, travel and some equipment rent. The whole team worked for free 14-15 hours a day. It was very hard. But then my student film entered a Switzerland Worldwide Film Festival and was shown in Moscow at Museum of Modern Art and as for me of course this is a living dream because I didn't count on anything. Then I thought that in Soviet Union the film process was controlled by totalitarian government in world cinema by authoritarian producers and for the first time in history of cinema in my case we use cryptocurrency and of course by my grandmother. I would like to say huge thanks to Trade the Lies and Cointelegraph. It is an honor for me to take feedback from such uh, platforms. This episode is sponsored by Trade Lies, a global ecosystem for crypto trading and investing. Check out their platform using the link in the description. Hi everybody, I'm Brain. Um, so you do have a blessed day, and so you're doing well with where you are. And I'm in Nigeria, down in a do state. That's my city. That's where I'm from. And um, I'm so grateful for today. I'm grateful for the opportunity um, to see you guys and to send out the, um, this video. It's just my uncle. And his friends so it was his friend who convinced him about the cryptocurrency about the bitcoin on 2014 was the year he did the investment he invested two thousand dollars my uncle before he made that investment he himself really did not have the knowledge on cryptocurrency or bitcoin and when he made the investment he did not really took the investment seriously unfortunately for my uncle the private laptop computer he used his personal or not the bank phone that he used for his work right now that was what he used in the registration of the bitcoin so after a while he said uh, one of one of his nephew his name is Kelvin, living also in Lagos State with him. The boy was in the university, so he needed a computer for his work in school. He met with my uncle, and my uncle um, sort of, instead of giving him money to buy a new computer, he has a computer at home that he is not using. So he felt, okay, the boy should take the computer, use it for a while, and the boy should bring back the computer when the boy is through using it. 
there was this very big reception in Nigeria and banks started laying out workers. Thousands of people were unemployed and he was affected. He was a banker. At that point of his life, when he was laid out, he had series of loan. He took maybe for his car, the house he was living, his kid that was in school, the business and he opened for his wife and some other um, loans, those things were on his head. And you know, here in Nigeria, it's not like other countries where you have things like insurance plan working for you. Yeah, things like that don't work. Um, you're just there on your own. Um, thereabouts, he met with a friend who, as they were discussing, and the friend um, talked to him on a cryptocurrency and how Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrencies are doing well in the market. So my uncle, according to him, said he remembered he had invested back in 2014. He invested up to $2,000 back then. I believe at, at that particular point in time, he was a little bit happy. Um, meet with his nephew, Kelvin, for his private computer. And Kevin had to tell him that the computer was bad and he was looking for a better one. Um, Kevin, which was his nephew, he took the computer to the computer market. He had to um, um, sell it, adding money to it to get a new one, not informing my uncle. So hearing that Mr. Kola was dead, he could not trace the computer, he could not get it. He did not even have an idea on what password was used, um, ID or the crypto wallet that was used in the registration. Um, that was what happened. He came back and he was um, devastated and sadly he felt sick. Um, the whole family ran around him trying to help. But with little in our hands, we could not do anything. He had um, this uh, partial paralysis. He died 2020 now. It was a very sad story for me. He was his own family. As far as I could remember, he was having no illness before he realized that he could not recover it anymore. So it came very fast and we could not even do anything about it because we have little. So, as in, he passed on. Um, to me, I believe it was the um, like the frustration covering everything. He lost his job and an investment that would have helped him. Um, for me, me, I felt like maybe he lost hope. But to an extent, I trust cryptocurrency because I believe if my uncle had trusted it, he would have taken it very serious. He would have been able to save the wallet, remembering the ID, writing it down somewhere. And I believe it would have bring him out from the problem he was in. So to an extent, um, his mistake had um, even given me more interest in learning what the crypto world has to offer. So for me, I trust cryptocurrency. I believe it's a future that we are going into. I started trading stocks when I was like 14 years old. You know, I didn't grow up from rich family and uh, my parents are all, always, you know, arguing about finances and money. You know, I wanted to help out the family. That's how I got into trading at 14. I remember on CNBC seeing this crazy chart just going parabolic from like, you know, $60 to $1,200. And then very quickly after that, I think it was the Mt. Gox fiasco and uh, Bitcoin prices started tanking. Everyone was worried, saying it's a big scam. But to me, you know, if an exchange fails, it doesn't mean anything for the underlying technology. It doesn't mean anything for the centralized currency. I took that as a good buying opportunity. I was much younger and didn't think very deeply about how this thing could affect so many aspects of the financial system later on. So it just seemed like a fun trading vehicle. In 2017, my now co-founder Mark sent me this white paper about a decentralized futures exchange. He was like, you know, can you help us raise money? So I said, sure, you guys are really brilliant. I'll just send it to all my friends and they will all invest, right? And uh, I can make an easy buck or two like that. We had a lot of hurdles to go through. No one really believed in the project in the beginning. Long story short, the first company that, you know, we tried to do within the crypto space wasn't, it, it didn't really take off. Uh, we quickly pivoted to our core strength of trading. Once we did that, it was a much easier path because we understood what to do every single step. But it was still very, very difficult to raise money. In 2018, you know, it was a bear market. Everyone had gotten burned in you know, late 2017, uh, mid 2018 on ICOs. So nobody wanted to invest, right? So we barely raised enough capital to get Kronos Research started. 
you know, I was trading because we didn't raise that much money in the beginning. If I saw a good opportunity, I would jump on it and try to make money and not lose. So then, you know, I was on stage in Sydney, I think, or Melbourne, one of those two. After flying for like 20 hours or something crazy, you know, talking about Kronos and Trade, Then I saw like kind of all the altcoins, you know, coiling up and about to break out. So, you know, I had to take that trade even though I was on stage. And uh, luckily I finished my 20 minute talk so that I had time to, uh, to do that while other people were talking. I try not to trade on my cell phone as much, but because I was traveling a lot in the beginning and it's very, very difficult because you can only see a couple of things happening on a tiny little screen, right? And I'm used to having multiple like six, seven monitors and now I'm sitting there with a tiny screen. You know, your attention is like 10 different directions. I think it was a few hundred thousand. It, it wasn't bad, especially uh, our capital base was tiny back then. Mark and I, I mean, we basically didn't take a salary or maybe it was like a tiny salary, like $3,000 a month for the first two years. I think it's okay that we talk about the nano situation now, but I definitely didn't want to talk about it back then, right? Like right after I made the trade or something like that. I think it's one of those things that I just had to do what needed to be done such that we can achieve the results that we have now. Sadness, joy, trial, and success. What are these but elements of our common human experience brought together by the network of cryptocurrency? Do you feel inspired? Share your stories with me at jackson at cointelegraph.com. Together, we will tell them to the world. This is the fundamental virtue of crypto. It is for everyone. Thanks for watching.